The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. I am the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Rated by independent research, the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Dark Moon. It was a miracle, the kind of miracle peculiar to a piece of Southern California acreage, where only a few years ago, a handful of men in puttees and riding breeches put their caps on backwards, grabbed their megaphones firmly, and set their cameras to grinding out an industry. Yes, it was the kind of a miracle that happens to someone almost every day in Hollywood. Russell Benton told himself all this as he walked into the oak-paneled office of Matthew Ellsworth, movie producer. Cast an eye on the artificially young secretary behind the artificially old desk and introduced himself. I have an appointment with Mr. Ellsworth. His. I'm Russell Benton. Oh, yes, Mr. Benton. Mr. Ellsworth is expecting you. Uh, this way, Mr. Benton. Uh, don't bother. I know the way. Oh, thank you. Am I on time, Matt? You're early. Sit down. Yeah, this, uh, this is one appointment I didn't want to miss. <laughs> Nervous? Uh, yeah, a little. Relax, it's not going to hurt a bit. You know, I've got a lot of confidence in you, Russ. I hope you're right. Funny, isn't it? Only a week ago, you were just another name. A face that dropped in once a week at the casting offices around town. Now I've got every movie columnist in the country on my back trying to get your life story. <laughs> a little premature, isn't it? I don't know. I think this screen test will be everything I want it to be. I hope so. And if you make it, Russ, you'll be right at the top. It's a smash vehicle, this one we're testing you for. I think you're right for it. It needs a leading man with a touch of character. And in my opinion, you can't miss. Dark Moon. Three years on Broadway and still going. We spent a half a million for the picture rights of Dark Moon, you know? Tell me, Matt, there was, a, there was another guy. Don Bradford? Yeah. He's up for the part, too, isn't he? He made a great test, but I think you'll top him. The New York people seem to think he's terrific. I'm not so sure. Uh-huh. Uh, what about my test? When does it happen? As soon as they're ready on the set. <laughs> it's a little like... Waiting to be hanged. Relax, I said. By the way, uh, what do you think of the part? It's a natural for me. Shame I didn't find you when I was casting the play in New York. It wouldn't have been hard. I was there at the time. Well, what made you leave? Circumstances, Matt. Theatrical? Matrimonial. Oh. I didn't know you were married. I'm not. Been divorced for two years. Couldn't make a go of it, huh? Or uh, am I on a touchy subject? No, 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 no. It was simple. She liked mink. My pocketbook didn't. An actress? Yeah, she's probably still back there. I haven't seen her since we split. Oh, that's too bad. I've only been married for about a year now, but I think I have a pretty wonderful girl. An actress, too. I met... Uh, excuse me. Ellsworth? Yeah, she's in my office. Good, we'll be right down. Let's go, boy. They're ready to shoot. We'll do on the set in ten minutes. And in ten minutes, the miracle begins to happen, Russ. As soon as you face the camera, the second Matt gives you the cue to begin, you forget about everything except the scene you're doing. Forget about Kathy and the marriage that failed. 
Forget the struggle, the futile hopes, and even the miracle that placed this opportunity in your lap. As you get into the scene, all you know is that you're giving the greatest performance of your life. And when the cameras finally stop grinding, you can tell from the look on Matt's face that you made it. That the name of Russell Benton is as good as on a thousand theater marquees over the magic title, Dark Moon. Cut. Same boys. All right, print it. All right, wrap it up. All right, back over. How was I, Matt? What do you think? Terrific. As far as I'm concerned, it's settled. Who else is there? A handful of New York backers. I'm flying back there tonight with the prince. Call you as soon as it's seven. It's happening right before your eyes, Russ. The wonderful night before Christmas feeling is real. Not a dream anymore. And now, with a big hurdle behind you, you know you can't miss. It's too good to keep, Russ. And early that evening, you drive over to Laura's home in Beverly Hills. She'll be proud of you now, and that's important. You want Laura to be proud. Russ, darling, I heard I'm so happy for you. Me too. Have they said anything definite? Matt's gone to New York with the prince. Oh, you mean about Don Bradford? Uh, yeah, huh? Well, the New York people have held out for him all along. But don't worry, darling. Matt will make him see the light. Come on now, the party's out by the pool. Let's join them, shall we? Wait a minute, Laura. I thought you said a small party. Come on, they won't bite. I'll introduce you to some of the nicer ones. <laughs> well, if you... Say, isn't that Frances Connors, the columnist? Uh-huh. Queen Frances herself. I want you to meet her. How do you do it, Laura? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Now, be nice to her, darling. She can make or break any actor in Hollywood. <laughs> do I uh, kneel down and, and uh, kiss her hand? <laughs> no. Just give her a captivating smile, A26, darling. The impressive oh. one. Frances! Excuse me. Yes? Oh, Laura! Francis, I'd like you to meet Russell Benton. This is Francis Connors, Russ. Aha, uh-huh. Mr. Lucky himself. How do you do, Russ? I've been waiting to meet you. How do you do? I've heard the good news. Congratulations. It's a great story and a great part, darling. I'm all for you. Thanks. Don't let it spoil you, Russ. <laughs> Go on, Francis. I love it. Well, let's have the story. What did you do up to now, Russ? Oh, the usual stock. And several years of theater work in New York. That's about all. Ever been married? Divorced? Kidnapped? Shot at? Married and divorced, yes. Ross, you never told me. You never asked, Angel. Why should I... Mr. Br- Benton, excuse me, please. Yes. You're wanted on the phone, sir. Said it was important. Oh, uh, you'll excuse me? Of course, darling. I'll think up some questions while you're gone. Be right back. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Ross. This is Kathy. Kathy? Oh, don't sound so happy, darling. Where are you? In front of my fireplace in Hollywood. But I thought you were in New York. How did you know I... What made you call here? It wasn't too hard to find you, dear. What do you want? I just want to talk to you, if it isn't asking too much. Well, you better forget it. I told you once I was through, and I meant it. You're being very foolish, you know. This is business. Business? Your part in Dark Moon. Maybe I didn't make myself clear. I don't want to talk to you about that or anything else. I think you will, Russ. <laughs> it's so nice. You're a success now. Matt Ellsworth seems to think so. <laughs> Does he? Anything odd about that? No, I just wonder sometimes whether Mr. Ellsworth knows you as well as I do. Perhaps I ought to have a talk with him. What makes you think you could talk to Ellsworth? Well, that shouldn't be hard, darling. You see, I'm his wife. With the prologue of Dark Moon, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. But now let's tune in on another strange story. Listen. <laughs> That's strange. I just bought that battery a short time ago, and it's dead already. Nothing so strange about that, lady. Chill nights and mornings put quite a strain on batteries. And some batteries hold up better than others. You mean all batteries are not alive? Indeed, they're not. 
That's why when you're investing money in a new battery, it's not good business to take a chance on new or unknown brands. Make sure that you're choosing a real quality article, such as a genuine signal battery. Every rugged signal battery is made from the very finest materials according to exacting specifications laid down by Signal Oil Company. And signal batteries are guaranteed for long, trouble-free service. Who stands back of that guarantee? Signal Oil Company, which supplies the products for almost 2,000 dealer-owned signal stations, is proud to stand back of every signal battery. One more question. Where can I get a signal battery? From your neighborhood signal dealer, the same man who checks your battery when you get gasoline and recharges it when it's low. Just another good reason for making your next battery a genuine, guaranteed signal battery. And now, back to the whistler. Yes, Russ. Kathy is Matt Ellsworth's wife. You stand dumbly at the telephone, her words still reverberating in your ears. Putting it together now, Matt's remark this morning about marrying some actress, the most wonderful girl in the world, he'd said. Yes, Russ, it's true. Kathy is Mrs. Matt Ellsworth. She can ruin you with a word. You make a hurried excuse to Laura, hasten down to your car, drive to the number Kathy gave you high in the hills overlooking Hollywood. And as you walk up the steep stairs to her front door, you make a decision, Russ, that if Kathy tries in any way to keep you from getting that part, you'll do anything to stop her, even kill her. Sit down, darling. Thanks. Nice of you to come. I thought you'd change your mind. I simply wanted to find out what was on yours. Well, aren't you even going to say you're happy to see me? I'm not a hypocrite, Kathy. Just as sweet as ever, aren't you? Suppose you get to the point. Point? I don't want to stay here any longer than I have to. Well, as I told you, it's about Dark Moon. Naturally. My husband doesn't often make mistakes for us. However, I think he's making one on this picture. And I've told him so. What kind of a mistake? There's a charming young actor I've come to know very well in the past year. I think he's made to order for the lead. And the New York backers seem to agree with me. Don Bradford? Yes. I want him to have that part. Why? I told you, he's charming. He's competent. I like him. I see. Uh, I might mention that Matt doesn't seem to agree with you. At least not after my screen test this morning. Yes, that's right. So I'm afraid there's only one way to convince him. Oh? You're going to tell him you don't want the part, Russ. You've decided not to take it. What? You think I'm crazy? No, that's why I'm talking to you. I've put some high cards in front of Matt, Russ. But I haven't played the ace. What do you mean? He doesn't know we were married. There are some things I could tell him. Well, you wouldn't do that. I don't think I'll have to. Because you're going to gracefully decline in favor of Don Bradford. I think I know why you're doing this. I told you I like Don Bradford. No, no, it isn't that. You know as well as Matt that I'm right for this one, and this part will make me overnight. And you resent that, don't you, Kathy? Nothing could hurt you more than seeing me successful. It's not a boost for Bradford. It's a kick at me. All right, call it anything you want. But Matt gets back from New York tomorrow night at 9.30. I'll give you until 9 to make up your mind. Where can I get in touch with you? Right here. I'll be waiting. Uh, you won't disappoint me. Now, will you, darling? No, Kathy. I won't disappoint you. You know she's deadly serious as you leave the house. Know that this woman will stop at nothing to ruin you. And calmly, without emotion now, as you guide the car through the dark streets back to your house, you decide to kill her. It's
It will involve a risk, a terrible risk. But you're ready to take any kind of a chance now with destruction 24 hours away. Yes, all you can do now is improvise. Prepare in advance for the questions that are bound to come. The next morning, you call Laura. Hello. Hello, Laura. This is Russ. Uh, I wonder if you could give me a hand. Well, why not? Anything planned for tonight? Free as a bird. Good. Uh, this, uh, this may sound a little premature, Angel, but I, uh, I thought I'd drum up a little thing at my place, you know, for 10 or 20 or so. A celebration. Oh, sounds like fun. I'll be busy all day, though. I have to get a few things for the party. I might not get there until around, uh, uh around 9. Could you, uh, be a pal, sort of get things started for me? Well, what time? 8.30 or so. I'll leave the place open, have everything ready for you. I uh, suppose you could round up enough people to make it interesting? <laughs> Ah, free party, darling. They'll be standing in line at the door. Then I can count on you. Of course, dear. Um, you won't be long, though. No, Laura. I won't be long. But, Russ, uh, you mind if I admit I'm a little confused? It's very simple, Jeff. Is it? You're not the biggest agent in the world, you know. You were saying the other day you'd give anything to handle me. After all, 10% of my salary after this picture is shot. And... I know, Russ. Uh, I, uh, I just don't understand why you'll sign up with me now after you turn me down. I can trust you, Jeff. That's why. I want you to do a favor for me. Oh. I'm having a little party tonight. I, I can't get there until after 9, and I want to tell him I was tied up with my agent, say, from 8.30 until 9 o'clock. You want me to say... Yeah, uh-huh. Oh. Look, Russ, I... That's all you know. That's all you have to say no matter what comes up. And tomorrow, I give you a seven-year contract as my manager. Now, what about it? <laughs> what can I lose? It's a deal. Yes, Russ, it'll be a straight story and you can stick with it. A conference with your new agent, Jeff Harris, until nine. A room full of witnesses ready to testify... You arrived at the party a few minutes afterwards with your arms full of groceries. That it's simply impossible that only a few minutes before you made the fatal visit to Kathy Ellsworth's house high on the hill. Yes, it's foolproof, isn't it? At five minutes to nine, you step out of your car, walk up the steep stone steps to Kathy's door and press the bell. Sorry I kept you waiting, darling. I was on the phone. Come on in. No hurry, Kathy. Let's go into the living room, shall we? Any way you like. Sit down. I'll stand. All right. Now, what about it? I want to make very sure of one thing, Kathy. You are going through with this? Well, of course I am. Matt will be here in half an hour, Russ. There's no way I can change your mind. I told you the way. It's too bad, Kathy. Too bad. Russ, no. Russ. Ah, Mr. Benton. Good evening, Angelo. Open a little late, aren't you? Uh, every night, Mr. Benton. Take my advice, my friend. Never go into the delicatessen store business. Work all the day. Work all the night, too. I thought you closed at nine. It's ten after, isn't it? Uh, ten o'clock a week, close. Oh, well, that's a break for me. I got a bunch of hungry friends on my hands tonight. Uh, what do you suggest? Oh, maybe some salami, a Swiss cheese, a beer. Great, great. A pound of each of those. Some kosher dills, if you have any. A couple of loaves of rye bread. Uh, and... Take it easy. And some champagne, Angelo. Champagne? Yeah, yeah, half a case. After all, Angelo, this is a celebration. <laughs> You try and shake the picture of her out of your mind as you leave the delicatessen and drive towards your house and the waiting guests. It's a grim picture, Russ. Kathy slumped limply against the overstuffed chair near the fireplace, awaiting the arrival of her husband in a matter of minutes now. A cold dread creeps over you, Russ, and the awful finality of what you've done makes you realize only now that, important as it seemed a few minutes ago, Dark Moon and the new career wasn't worth this. No, Russ. 
It wasn't worth murder. But there's no changing it now. You steady yourself, take a firm grip on your nerves and the bundle of groceries, and open the heavy front door of your house. Hello, Russell. Hey, here he is, gang. Hail a conquering hero. Look, reinforcements. Oh, manna from heaven. Oh, what is it? I'm stuck. Hey, 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 take it easy. Ah, uh, that's my boy. Give me a hand, will you, Dave? Oh, what is it? Champagne. Woo! Will, I give you a hand. Here, let Uncle Dave oh, take care of it. Oh, be gentle, old man. I don't want to christen the floor. <laughs> always, always get this way when I hear that magic word. Where's Laura? Uh, out there in the wilderness somewhere. Laura! Uh, here you are, Dave. Take care of the champagne, will you? You bet I will. Laura? Oh, Russ. You did a great job on the party. Thanks. When you're a great man, I'll be your secretary. Did you take care of everything, darling? Huh? Your business. The thing that tied you up. Oh, Oh, yes, yes. Uh, everything is fine. Did Matt call yet? No, not yet. When did he get in? He ought to be in now. <laughs> Nervous? <laughs> yeah, uh, a little. <laughs> I don't blame you. Well, it'll be over in an hour or so. It was nice of Frances Connors to accept tonight. Is she here yet? No. Let's see, there was something I... Oh, yes, I knew there was something I had to tell you. Yeah. Russ, telephone. Okay, I'll take it in the den. Excuse me a minute, Laura. Yes. Yeah? Russ? Yes? This is Matt. I'm calling from the airport. What do they say, Matt? Brother, did I have a fight on my hands. We went round and round for six straight hours with me talking Russ Benton while they talked Don Bradford. How'd they like my test? Great. They thought you did a great job. It's all set, then? Yeah, that's why I called you, Russ. I didn't want to keep you in suspense any longer. That's nice of you, Matt. I, uh, just wanted you to know I tried my best. Y tried your best? They were too much for me, kid. I'm afraid it's going to be Bradford. Bradford? As I said, they love the test and all that, but they were set on Bradford from the... Bradford? Place. And after all, they're putting up most oh, of the dough. Oh, no. Russ, hello. Hello, Russ. He couldn't have done it better with a sledgehammer, Russ. The room swims before your eyes. There's a buzzing in your ears, wiping out the sounds Russ, of the party in the Russ. next room. And you realize Matt's voice is still coming out of the receiver hey, on the what's table. Going on there? You pick it up, lay it in the cradle. Hello, Russ. Hello. You've committed a murder, Russ. You've killed Kathy. And for what? You stumble up to your room where you can be alone and sit smoking cigarette after cigarette while the party downstairs goes on without you. You can almost see Matt on his way now, on his way to find Kathy. You picture his car cutting through the night, winding along the tree-lined streets high over Hollywood. You can hear his steps as he walks up the brick path to the door, the key in the lock. You can see him as he walks into the living room, calling for her, puzzled. And you can see the sudden stroke of terror in his eyes as he finds the answer. You don't know how much later it is that the sound of your own doorbell downstairs snaps you out of it. And as you hurry back down, Dave is letting two men in. One of them is Matt. The other, a grim-faced man in a gray suit, is unquestionably a police officer. Well, Matt, welcome home. Hello, Dave. Hello, Matt. Russ, can I see you a minute? Sure. Let's go in here. You made it here in a hurry. Come straight from the airport? No, I didn't. I thought you were sore the way you hung up on me. Hung up on you? Yeah, Right after you gave me the jolt about Bradford. And it was a jolt, too, you know. That's no reason to hang up on a guy. I guess we were disconnected. Oh, I'm sorry. This I... is Inspector Hardin, Russ. Homicide detail. Homicide? That's right. I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Of course. But I don't understand. I'd like to know where you were tonight, Mr. Benton. Why? Is something wrong? It's my wife, Russ. Kathy was murdered tonight. Murdered? Uh, why are you asking me? You didn't answer my question, Mr. Benton. Where were you all evening? Here? Uh, why, practically. Practically? Yeah, I was, uh, I was tied up with Jeff Harris, my agent, until pretty late. You can check on that. Then I stopped on my way here and bought some things for the party. Look, why are you asking me? We had to ask a few questions, Russ. My wife had written the name Russell on a memo pad. After it, nine o'clock. Good Lord, Matt, I don't even know your wife. Until this moment, I didn't even know her name. What about it, Mr. Ellsworth? 
I'm surer now than I was before. What are you talking about, Matt? How could I? I had to do it, Russ. The inspector insisted we talk to you as a matter of routine. Even though I knew it was ridiculous. It wasn't Russ here, Inspector. I think I can vouch for that. Okay. Sorry we bothered you, Mr. Benton. Uh, yeah, uh, Matt, you don't know how this makes me feel. I know, Russ. Thanks. Come on, Hardin. We'd better get down to headquarters. <laughs> Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, see if you can pick the winner in this discussion. That's a smooth running motor you have there, Mary. What kind of gasoline do you use? Signal, Jim. I like the go it puts into the old buggy. Hey, that's interesting. I use Signal, too, because I like its good mileage. Mileage or performance, which is the better yardstick of gasoline quality? Well, fact of the matter is, it takes superior performance to give you extra mileage. You see, the only way any gasoline can give you quicker starting, faster pickup, and smoother knock-free power is by helping your motor run more efficiently. And when your motor runs more efficiently, naturally you enjoy extra mileage, the thing Signal Gasoline is famous for. That's why we say, to be sure of the tops in gasoline quality, there are just two things to remember. One... In gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two... Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. Well, Russ, you've brought it off. Somehow, somewhere, you found the strength to face Matt and the inspector. And as you guide them back to the front door, you know the worst is over. That in spite of that damning piece of paper with your name on it, there's still no reason for them to suspect you. Still no known connection between you and Kathy. Still no discovered motive. And even though it was futile, Russ, even though the reason for the whole terrible night vanished into thin air with Matt's telephone call, you're safe. And with Matt still on your side, there'll be a future for you somewhere. As you open the door for them, Laura comes up to you looking a little worried. What is it, Russ? It's, uh, it's nothing, Laura. Matt, aren't you going to stay? No, Laura. Well, what is this? What's the matter? It, it's, it's nothing, Laura. There was just some question about where I was tonight at 9 o'clock. Oh, well, you told him, of course. Yes. You, uh, you know where he was, miss? Of course. He was at Kathy Ellsworth's front door. She told me so when I called to ask her why she hadn't arrived at Russ's party. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at this same time... Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story was Frank Lovejoy. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by John W. Hart, music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Next Wednesday, for a full hour of mystery, tune in a half hour earlier. Enjoy The Saint as well as The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>